welcome back everyone, I'm the Silver Watchman and this is episode number 16 of Dead Cells. Now, in the previous episode we read through Luke chapter 22, which had roughly 70 verses? Around there, around in the 70s. And today we are going to be reading just Luke chapter 23 as it has 56 verses. But Luke chapter 24 has, I believe, 53. Which means we won't have time to get through that one. But, to compensate, we're going to be breaking down more verses in this episode than uh, usual. Now, I did run into a bit of an audio glitch recording the video. So, in the second half of the video, it's going to be, I would say, five or so minutes shorter than it typically is. And that's simply because I ran into the glitch and I could not resolve it. So, there's that. Nevertheless, though, so, join me in prayer that we may remain focused and gather more information from the Word of God. Dear Lord, may you guide the message today and may you save the souls of those who are unsaved. For those that are saved, may you strengthen their bond with you. And let everybody that walks away from here walk away with a little bit more wisdom than they did when they first turned on the video. May you give them hope, as you have given me hope. May it guide this message and ensure that we shall stay focused. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's begin. Luke chapter 23, King James Version of the Bible. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him, saying, and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galatian, Galilee, Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see of him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him, and Herod with his men of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at en enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault 
in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him? No, nor yet Herod, for I send to you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one of one unto them at the feast and they cried out all out they cried out all at once saying away with this man release unto us barbarous who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison Pilate, therefore willing to release jesus spake again to them but they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And they said unto him the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed, and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required, and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people, and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves, and for your children, for... Behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. And they shall begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said, Then said Jesus, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription was also written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou f fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed Justly, for we receive due reward for our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. 
And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, unto thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was a preparation, and a Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the sepulchre, and how his body was laid. And they returned, and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Powerful chapter very powerful chapter. In this chapter we have seen the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, I shall return, give me about five or so minutes, as I highlight uh, the verses and bring up my notes. But the verses that we are going to be looking at so far are 13, 14, 22, 45, 46, and 47. And if we have the time, we will also go over 33 and 34. If we do not, then we shall not. I shall return.
And I'm back. Oh, let me adjust my mic. There we go. So, like I said, we're looking at verses 13, 14, 22, 45, 46, and 47. <sighs> I apologize, people. It is a bit late in the night. But on the bright side... This is a reasonably peaceful game. <laughs> uh, Alright. So what we see here in verse 13, verses 13 and uh, 14, we see this. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people, and, behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. So essentially what's going on here is... So, Pilate would have to be, I want to say... Gosh, what would be the equivalent? Mm. A judge? Oh. Definitely not a lawyer. Mm. I apologize, my uh my dog is in the background. using me as a pillow so <laughs> so what we're seeing here is Jesus has been brought to Pilate and he's supposed to be found guilty by Pilate you know by the the head priest the rulers and you know so, some and some of the people and they're all accusing him, saying, "Yeah, yeah, he he broke he broke the main laws of the uh, of of your of your country, so uh, execute him." The equivalent to, of this situation would be let's see, religious leaders taking a just somebody that, that's just trying to do the right thing by f uh, taking them by force and bringing them to I, I would I would dare say a judge and saying hey uh, this guy committed murder he needs to be thrown in jail when in reality, the person has committed no murder and has really done nothing wrong other than make, up, make uh, upset the religious leaders. I mean, it's not like we, we've seen this kind of similarity of things happen in history multiple times. Oh no, people don't, don't abuse power like that. What, what am I saying? So essentially... That's what's going on. Pilate literally calls back all these people to say, "Yo, this guy's this guy's innocent. What is your deal?" And this is after, you know, after you know, Harad sends it back, being like, "Yo, this guy's innocent. I don't see what's wrong with him, other than the fact that he won't talk." Because you know they say. He got sent to Harad wearing his clothes, and Harad sent him back with a nice robe and being mocked. Because it's, it's right here. He questioned him with many words. 
in questioned with him in many words. So essentially, this man had to be asking Jesus a large number of questions. Like, how did you do this? Why are you here? Aside from the fact that Pilate sent you here. And you know, essentially, now Pilate and Harad are friends. Are they, are they friends on the mutual bond of they can't really see what Jesus had done wrong? Maybe Harad cracked a good joke. I don't know. It doesn't really tell us. But what we do know is that they're friends now. So going down to verse 22, we see this. And he said unto them, The third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. So essentially what Pilate here is saying is, This man is innocent. Why do you want him dead so badly? I can, I'm just gonna, I just want to give him a slap on the wrist in the hopes that this won't happen again. But then, you know, the crowd just loses their mind, which is what we see in verse 23. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified, and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. So, what we're seeing here is the chief priests and the leaders of the people were instigating the crowd. That is how it's been shown onto me. They were instigating the crowd, you know, because people have a, I'm going to be honest with you, group mentality is a terrifying thing to me. Because if one person is leading that group that wants you dead, they can get that whole group on their side to agree. Because most of the time, people are more afraid of being left out than they are not being heard. I've seen this time and time again. And in the past, I've used it to my advantage. It is a terrifying, terrifying concept. <laughs> so, going down to verses 45, 46, and 47. This is after verse 44, which says this. It was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, which follows into 45, which says this. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. So, let's see. Had to be about... Okay, sixth hour to the ninth hour. So let's see. If we're going by a 24 hour clock, which is most likely what they used back then, Jesus was out there from, I want to say, a little bit before 6 a.m., because, you know, he still had to be crucified and. Before the crucifixion, he was beaten brutally. So, the darkness came over the land. There was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So that's about, let's see, three hours worth of darkness. The sun being darkened. And the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Now, for those of you that don't know what the, what the veil is, the simplest explanation I have is that it is a eight-foot curtain 
that was rent, meaning ripped. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to rip just, you know, one of our thin, rinky-dink carpets that we've got nowadays. Yeah, those are hard to rip. Now imagine eight foot of that, eight feet of carpet. And this isn't just like any kind of, any kind of material. No, no, this is eight feet of like thickness worth of, let's see if I remember correctly, it is a canvas like material, linen. There were also some other types of cloth in there as well, but linen is the only one that I can really remember being there. When we, uh, when we go do another series, or if we have time in this series, we might go through Deuteronomy. Actually, we'll, we will be going through Deuteronomy, I just don't know if we're doing it in this series. So, that's basically what happened, and the next verse, we hear Jesus say this. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Having said, having said thus, he gave up the ghost. The significance of this is, well, He's basically saying, I've done it. I've done what you wanted me to do. So now we're going to look at verse 47. And this is the reaction of a centurion. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. We're going to have to say, before this matter, the centurion was not a believer. After seeing... The whole sky, everything just go dark. And stay like that for about three hours. And I'm going to have to assume that the veil in the temple, when it ripped, it probably made a very loud ripping sound. Because, you know, you don't just tear cloth and it doesn't make a sound. Anybody that's ever ripped clothes knows that that makes a pretty distinct sound. Eight feet of that, probably gonna be very loud. So him just witnessing all of this was like, that was a man of God. That was a righteous man. And he praised God. So, that being said, Join me in prayer if you want to give your life over to Christ, who lived, died, and resurrected for your salvation. Shortly after I read this verse, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. That's in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, King James Version of the Bible. Now join me, join me in prayer. Dear Lord, I believe that you, Jesus, are the Christ, the Son of the living God, but more than that, that you are God himself. I come before you today to ask that you shall come and dwell within my heart. May you wash away my sins with your heavenly blood. And may you forgive me of my transgressions. I do not know how to walk in your ways, but I ask for your patience and mercy and for your guidance that I may walk in your ways for all eternity. I thank you for doing so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you made that prayer in faith, welcome to the family. If you want to do more to represent God or represent the channel, I'd like you to go out there, like the video, share the video, or share the channel with friends, enemies, who knows. Whoever you want to share this with, for whatever reason, 
just get it out there or you sub you could subscribe to the channel and that way you can hit that notification bell and you get notified every single time I upload something I'm gonna be honest with you I do it about once a week if you don't want to do any of that leave a comment what you thought of the video or heck even how you would break down these uh, this chapter and I do go I do work with a third-party seller known as spring for, formerly known as teespring so you're gonna be seeing a small instructional video on how to access uh, the silver watchman's wares website from my YouTube channel you could also access it from my Instagram which is also silver watchman if this seems like a bit much for you you don't want to spend any money that is perfectly fine you can go out there and help out the least of your societies now what do I mean when I say that I mean you know helping out the homeless I don't know how what you could do to help them out you could just maybe pass them a couple of bucks get them a coffee share with them a sandwich listen to their stories comfort the widowed because let's be honest it's always painful to lose somebody you love especially when it's death you're not always gonna get closure when somebody dies one second they're there and the next second they're just gone so comfort them in their time of great great sorrow or you could just protect the innocent I'll be honest, one of Satan's greatest plans for this world is to corrupt every single child of the world. The reason why he plans that is because if people are corrupted and evil from childhood, they're not really going to go away from it. Not unless something dramatic happens, and let's be honest, not a lot of dramatic stuff happens. Satan wants to keep us weak, he wants to keep us uncertain and confused we must not let him win I'll be honest I'm very grateful that you've stayed to the end of the video I would like for you to come and watch another video of mine should you have the time and the patience I'm not the best teacher but I try my best to bring you information that will help you for all eternity. Nevertheless, though, I thank you all for watching. Glory be to God. And this is the Silver Watchman signing out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I go, your natural next step, if you made that prayer in faith, is to go and um, take a public confession of faith. Uh, would you, what that entails is just going out, finding somebody who's anointed in a baptism of water, and, you know, once they get to the ceremony ready to go, what's essentially going to happen is that he's going to, he or she is going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior or something along those lines? And you will say yes. You'll be dunked underneath the water and then brought out of the water, signifying the death of the old man and the birth of the new man. After which, you know, you can officially say that your life with God has begun. Even though technically your life with God has begun the very second you asked him to come and dwell within you. Nevertheless, though, thank you all for watching. Glory be to God, and this is the Silver Watchman signing out.